CBS Sports presents the National Football League. Today, the Atlanta Falcons against the Chicago Bears. We are live from Soldier Field in Chicago, a hot and sunny afternoon on the shores of Lake Michigan. Temperatures in the 90s for the season opener. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris. And, of course, Johnny here in Chicago. Bears fans have their focus sharply set on young quarterback Jim McMahon. Mike Ditka says that McMahon is number one. As you know, he was NFC Rookie of the Year last year, and they're hoping for bigger and better things. However, the problem is McMahon has not had a good exhibition season, but Ditka says he's a winner and he's a gamer. We're going to find out today. Well, of course, Falcons fans down in Atlanta are curious about a new coach, a new system. One thing for sure, their new coach, Dan Henning, knows about winning. He comes over from the Washington Redskins. And as you know, the Redskins won the Super Bowl last year, but he's brought in the one-back offense because he he wants to give Bartkowski a little more flexibility in the passing game. He thinks he's got to change with the times. And one part of that new offense is the fact that Junior Miller now is going to play the H-back or the roverback because of an injury to Bo Robinson. Miller has switched from the tight end spot, and he's got a big job today because he's got to run his patterns on the go and block on the go. We'll see how that works out. About time for kickoff. All right, and the Bears have won the toss, and Willie Galt, number 83 from Tennessee, will be back deep. The kicker is Mick Luckers. The Britisher from the University of California, number 18. And we have ourselves a hot afternoon to open what the Bears and Falcons fans will hope will be a hot season for these two teams. Galt in the end zone about 10 yards deep, almost 10 yards, will not run it out. And so the Bears will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Offensively for the Chicago Bears, of course, Jim McMahon, the man we have been talking about, uh, will have the pressure of the Chicago fans looking for a season of victory. Walter Payton and Matt Suey will start at the running backs. Ken Marjoram and Brian Bashnagel are the wide receivers. And young Jim Colbert, their number one choice at left tackle with Rob Feta playing for the injured Noah Jackson, Neil Sorey, Van Horn, and Emery Moorhead. Wide to the left goes Marjoram, and wider than that goes Willie Galt in on first down. Set on the wing is the tight end, Moorhead. McMahon throwing on first down, incomplete, intended for Walter Payton trying to sneak out of the backfield, and defending on him was the defensive end, Jeff Merrill, number 75. Defensively for the Falcons, they are opening in a 4-3. Yates and Merrill are the ends. Don Smith and Mike Zeely are the tackles. The linebackers will have Fulton Kuykendall in the center with Buddy Curry on the right side. And on the left side will be Al Richardson, number 56. The secondary, Butler, Pridemore, Glazebrook, and Kenny Johnson. Second and 10 for the Chicago Bears in black. Bash Nagel and Ken Marjoram, wide receivers. Peyton trying to find room off right tackle and gets only a couple before he's pulled down. Kuykendall is there, and the first man was Al Richardson, number 56. So it is third and eight. And Johnny Morris, uh, I guess you're not too surprised that the uh, Bears came out throwing on first down. That's right. They've had a tendency to throw the ball a lot more this training camp. They've scored 25 points a game, which is much higher than their average last season. We're going to get a good look at Walter Payton. He's going to be doing a lot of things this year, and he only played for the first time last week and looked fantastic. So the Falcons are going to have their hands full on defense. As you can see, the Bears now spread out plenty of offense. Out of the shotgun, the inside handoff to Peyton, trying the right side again, away from one man, and then good pursuit by the Falcons. Drives him out at the 24-yard line. Buddy Curry, ranging over from the right side linebacking spot, making the tackle and bringing up a punting situation for the Bears. As you mentioned earlier, Tim, it's very hot. It's 92 degrees, and down on that soldier field, the artificial surface has got to be close to 100 degrees, so that'll have a bearing on this game. We're going to see a lot of players in there. I don't think Peyton or William Andrews would play the whole way because of this extreme heat do you I don't think so and of course Atlanta in particular has got great backup strength and rigs behind Andrews Parsons will punt it Billy White Shoes Johnson is standing at the 35 yard line of Atlanta signaling fair catch so the Falcons will have pretty good field position for their first offensive possession a 41 yard punt by the Penn State punter Longtime veteran of the Bears, and the Falcons bring out offensively Steve Bartkowski with 
Junior Miller in the wing back position, known in Atlanta as the H back spot. William Andrews, the running back. Jackson and Jenkins are the wide receivers. Ken Thielman, Van Note, Scully, Bryant, and rookie Ben Young starting at tight end number 48. First down at the 34-yard line of the Atlanta Falcons, and Bartkowski will throw on first down. He's got a man open and overthrows him. The intended receiver, Alfred Jackson, and Jackson was wide open over there, but Bartkowski, who looked very sharp in practice all week long, perhaps a little eager there in uh, overthrowing Jackson. Defensively for the Bears, Hartenstein, Osborne, Hampton, and Harris, one of the solid defensive units in the NFL. The linebackers will have Otis Wilson, Mike Singletary in the middle, Brian Cabral for the injured Gary Campbell on the right side. Rookie Mike Richardson with Bell, Fensick, and Frazier in the Bears secondary. Second and 10 Atlanta. Draw play up the middle, Andrews, and Andrews blasts out for about eight yards. Gary Fensick making the tackle for the Bears. And William Andrews who rushed for 156 yards to lead Atlanta in that department in the preseason, gets his first pickup of 1983. And I believe he has about 47 straight games uh, of starting. Uh, he's played a lot for Atlanta, has not had too many injuries, just as Peyton, who has uh, started 104 consecutive games. As you look at Dan Henning, he's got to be kind of excited today, wouldn't you say? I would think so. Big day for the young coach. Steve McMichael is in defensively for the Bears. Harris is out, third and two. Barkowski lofts a sideliner and it is incomplete out of bounds intended for Alfred Jenkins on the coverage with Mike Richardson. Leslie Frazier make it number 21. Leslie Frazier the right cornerback. Third year man from Alcorn State. The Bears making a few changes defensively for 83. Todd Bell now the starter at strong safety. Mike Richardson replacing Terry Schmidt on the corner. We're looking at the Atlanta punter. And he is a rookie from Penn State, Ralph Giacomaro. So a couple of Penn State punters in action today. Jeff Fisher, number 24, awaits the punt at the 13-yard line of Chicago. Oh, good Big one. punt. Giacomaro really nailed that. It lands at the four-yard line, goes into the end zone, and will be a touchback. The Bears starting at their own 20-yard line when we return. A 57-yarder by Ralph Giacomaro. We are scoreless here in the first period, 12.52 to go. We are back at Soldier Field. Their feet are wet. The Falcons and the Bears have each had the ball one time and failed to move it. Now the Bears will try again from the 20-yard line following a 57-yard punt by the number 10 pick of the Falcons. Got them out. Jim McMahon has the Bears out with... Ash Nagel and Marjoram wide and tripped up his Matt Suey behind the line of scrimmage. Looks like he fell over one of his own offensive linemen who had been knocked down. Good play by Jeff Yates on that. He jammed up the block by Van Horn and uh, jammed up the play. Good defense by the Atlanta Falcons who playing the 4-3 so far. They have played some 3-4 as you know Tim throughout the exhibition season. They're going to play both defenses. Uh, says Coach Dan Henning, but uh, probably more four-man line because they have a wealth of defensive linemen. Second down and nine. Willie Galt is in now with Bash Nagel, a pitch to Peyton. Nice block on Curry. Peyton cuts it up inside for a gain of close to nine. It was a good block on Curry by Matt Suey, and I think Curry may have hurt his uh, knee a little bit. He was he got up limping from that as Matt Suey, number 26, out of the eye, is the lead blocker of four Peyton. You'll see number 50 come across the line of scrimmage right here. Suey's got to get that block to make the play successful, and he did get him right around the knee as Peyton cut back behind the block and got some yardage for Chicago. Don Smith and Bob Blazebrook made the stop. It is third and a yard. Bears with two tight ends in, make it three. Moorhead, Saldi, and the rookie Dunsmore. Walter Payton looking for daylight. Over the 30, bounce back. It'll be close to the first down. Good defensive reaction by the Atlanta Falcons. Buddy Curry coming over again from the right side. And Tom Pridemore coming up from safety. And it looks like they have just made the first down, despite the good effort by Curry. So the Bears have their first first down of the season at their own 30-yard line. 
And that was a play. It looked like it was going to gain big yardage for him. There was a hole there, but they jammed up Rob Fader, the guard, and the Falcons almost stopped it, but Peyton was able to get enough for the first first down of the football game. Rob Fader, the rookie from Pittsburgh, getting the start at left guard. He was the ninth choice of the Bears. Noah Jackson out of the groin. This is Moorhead, open in the middle for a gain of eight. To the 38-yard line of the Chicago Bears. Linebacker Fulton Kuykendall made the hit. And that was a case where the Atlanta linebackers dropped way off, and Moorhead and Peyton both came out and ran short, just went down the field and turned. And uh, if the Falcons continue that heavy drop-off, that's what the Bears will do all afternoon. There's 87 right at the middle of your screen. Everybody's too far down the field, and they give him eight yards as Kuykendall makes the tackle. Second and a yard to go. Willie Galt back in at wide receiver for Chicago. McMahon has time. Now out of the pocket. In pursuit comes Yates. McMahon. Has the first down yardage up to the 41-yard line, a little over the 41. McMahon was trying to make a lot more out of that. I like that call on second and short, but then he was wise enough to make sure he got the first down when he did not find a man open. That's the strength of Jim McMahon, his ability to get out of the pass rush as the Falcons came in, and McMahon went forward in the pocket. He was so successful last year, had the highest rating of any rookie quarterback in the NFL last year in history. And that's uh, pretty impressive, wouldn't you say? It is indeed. And Green Bay off to an impressive beginning, leading Houston 7 to nothing. 10 31 remaining first period. Dickie to Kaufman. Touchdown pass. Walter Payton. Payton with Not a lot of running room. Got maybe a yard as Don Smith and Mike Zeely combined to trip him up. It'll be second and about nine for the Chicago Bears. Of course, yesterday the NFL season opened with Philadelphia defeating San Francisco 22 to 17. Was Archie the hero of that one for the Eagles and relief of the injured quarterback Ron Jaworski. Second and nine here at Soldier Field. Golf and Bashnagel, the wide receivers. The wide left is Golf. The throw set the draw play to Suey, and he is wrapped up by Jeff Yates. Number 79, the 12-year man from Boston College. No gain. I'd say he had a little help, too. Everybody was in on that tackle. There must have been six missed blocks as the Atlanta defense really smelled that one out. we got to give some credit to uh, Bobby Butler. I'll tell you, uh, he's been coming up on the corner, really jamming up those end runs, and he's not a big cornerback, you might say. And he's the course man. He's coming across the line of scrimmage, so we'll have to watch Butler. He's been real aggressive out there on the corner, and they go after him. However, Atlanta uses a lot of double zone this year with uh, some deep help for the cornerbacks. Loss of about a half yard on that play. It'll bring up third and about nine and a half for the Bears. In motion goes Bashnagel. And again has time. He has a man open, Bashnagel. Bashnagel to midfield, and he'll be short of the first down by about a half yard into Atlanta territory. He's met there by Kuykendall and Pridemore, 54 and 27 for Atlanta. And of course, the crowd here right away saying, let's go for it. It'll be fourth and about a yard. Mike Ditka is over on the sideline, still has not come up with a decision as Bob Parsons is ready to run out on the field. He doesn't know if he's going to get a, a chance to. They're going for it. They're going for it. They're sending yep. in the wide receivers, Galt and Marjoram, bringing in the play. Well, let's see if the fans are as happy if they don't make it. <laughs> well, I think also it's a test. Oh, timeout has been called by Chicago as McMahon comes over to the sideline. Mike Ditka was an aggressive football player. He was offensive minded when he played, and he's still offensive minded now as a coach. And if anybody's going to go for it in this situation, I'd say a guy like Mike Ditka is the guy. Well, they didn't get it done in time, so they had to take the timeout. We'll be back. Soldier field, fourth and one for the Bears inside Atlanta territory at the 49. They have stacked up the big guys. Moorhead, Jay Saldi, the former Cowboy, and Orky Pat Dunsmore, the tight end from Drake, are all in on that stacked front. Suey and Peyton, the running backs. David Fry has joined the defense for the Atlanta Falcons along the front. And they go to Suey, and he is met and stopped. Matt Suey going dead straight ahead, and there were a bunch of white shirts there to meet him. Fulton Kuykendall was right there. He watched the play, went right for Suey, right for the open hole. Nobody even paid any attention to Walter Payton, so they must have had a nice little cue or tip on that one as Kuykendall was right there to fill the hole. Beautiful play. He was way off the line of scrimmage. Now watch the hole open, and Kuykendall, 54, will come out of nowhere here to fill it. Here he comes, 54, 
didn't even worry about Walter Payton, went for Matt Suey. And I tell you what, anytime both those linebackers like that do that, they must have had some kind of cue that Payton wasn't going to get the ball. What a good job defensively for the Falcons, who will take over at midfield when we return to Soldier Field. Chicago, hot New York, and you'll see a glamour match. Vince Van Patten against John McEnroe later today on CBS. And Vetus Carolitis takes on young Aaron Frickstein, one of the outstanding juniors in the United States, who at 16 has become the youngest man to win a U.S. Open match. And there he is taking on a highly regarded Vetus Carolitis later today here on CBS. Meanwhile, the Falcons have first down at their own 49-yard line. And yeah, the pitch run, out run, is run, William Andrews cutting it upfield, and he is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Wilson and Cabral, the linebackers, combining 55 and 54. Okay, here's a situation with Junior Miller. Otis Wilson was out there, and he was covering Junior Miller man for man. It turned out to be a run. Miller cutting up the field. You'll see 55 come in on the tackle as Miller blocks down, and here's nobody to block okay, number 55. Otis Wilson right there. He comes in on the tackle, makes a good play. Nobody to block him. Second and ten. And the man they call the H-back in the technical designation in Atlanta. Miller, number 80, is wide to the left. Andrews trying the left tackle side. Nowhere to go. The Bears shut that down after a gain of maybe a half yard at best. Mike Singletary and Mike Hartenstein on the tackle. Number 50 and number 73. Well, we have a couple of scores around here. St. Louis has the early lead over New Orleans, seven to nothing. And let's check out the Minnesota-Cleveland game. The Vikings on top, seven nothing, first quarter. And Green Bay has a seven to three lead over Houston. Kaufman got a touchdown for Green Bay in that game. It's third down at nine. Barkowski rolling to the right. Deep sideline is complete. Looks like Alfred Jenkins, number 84. Despite double coverage, Jenkins made the grab on a perfect pass from Bartkowski. First down, Atlanta. At the 34-yard line of Chicago, Mike Richardson, the rookie cornerback, knocked him out of bounds. And what a super move by Jenkins, who averages 18 yards per catch throughout his career. He went way down the field on a deep out, and it must have been a 25-yard deep out. And watch Bartkowski, number 10. He's going to get the protection, and watch him also slide to the right. The partial rollout. This is the change that you're going to see in Henning's offense. Get Bartkowski out there a little bit. Give him a little extra count, as it took a while for Jenkins to run that deep out. Good play. 99 consecutive games, the longest active streak in that category in the NFL. Barkowski floats it up and just overthrows Alfred Jenkins on the coverage deep. Again was Mike Richardson, the cornerback, so they went after the rookie. Two consecutive plays in a row, and twice Barkowski has overthrown his man in the early going. We were talking to Steve last night, and he says he loves this new offense. He says because uh, I get to throw a ball a little bit more, but he says we do a lot of adjusting uh, after the play begins. And as you can tell, they've been going for some bombs, been throwing the ball. They haven't had real good success during the exhibition season, scoring only 39 points. But the fact is, uh, they did score at the end of the last game, and it takes time to get an offense like this set in. Here is Miller running from that wingback spot into the pattern. The pass is complete to Matthews out of the backfield. Uh, pardon me, uh, the tight end Ben Young, number 48, the rookie from Texas, Arlington, making his first reception as an NFLer. He did not make a catch during the preseason, nor did Arthur Cox, the other rookie tight end. And, of course, these two guys getting their opportunity when the injury to Bo Robinson, the scheduled wing back, moved Junior Miller, who would have been the tight end, into that spot. So suddenly Ben Young, a little-known free agent from Texas, Arlington, finds himself a starter at tight end. First down for Atlanta. Miller in motion. Andrews, not much, a couple, pulling Dan Hampton and Todd Bell along behind him for about a yard. We'll bring up second and nine as Atlanta moving into the 18-yard line. Dan Hampton will be double teamed quite a bit during this game. The number one draft choice out of Arkansas has a broken finger that just looks terrible. If you look at it, it's just god-awful. And he has to tape it up, and it limits him on his grabbing, but he's still a heck of a football player. And as you can see, uh, the Falcons double teaming quite a bit because he causes action in that backfield. Second and nine, Atlanta. In motion back to the ball of Jackson. Straight drop to Barkowski. Touchdown. Touchdown. Touchdown, William Andrews. Perfectly delivered strike to William Andrews out of the backfield. And the Falcons have taken the lead here in Chicago. 
Boy, what a perfect pass. Up and over for Andrews, who came out. He's right to the right of your screen, number 31. He goes straight down the field. You see Fensick, number 45. He's the free safety watching the quarterback, but he can't get over in time. As you can see that Mike Singletary, number 50, is trying to cover Andrews all the way down the field. Perfect pass up and over. The Atlanta Falcons are on the board. William Andrews, who in 82 had 42 receptions for 503 yards. He can catch that football aside from one with the ball. And the Falcons and Dan Henning looking pretty good right now, wouldn't you say, Tim? Yes, indeed. Mick Luckhurst in for the point after. A 23-yard touchdown pass. He is one of the better men, but when you've got a big man like Hampton to try and knock it through, that's quite a handicap. Let's see it again. He comes right up the middle. I think you can see the uh, number 99 come through and jump up. Actually, a couple of other players. Actually, the Falcons just didn't block that real well, and the, the kick didn't have all much that height. So the Atlanta Falcons on a touchdown pass. Bartkowski to Andrews have taken a 6 to nothing lead in the first period. Waits the kickoff of Mick Luckhurst as the Falcons have gotten on the board first here in Chicago Soldier Field on the touchdown pass from Bartkowski to William Andrews. A perfect strike there. Seven plays, 50 yards. The distance, 247 on the clock. A 23-yard touchdown pass, and the wind keeps blowing the ball off the tee for Luckhurst. There's not a whole lot of wind out there, but enough to move the football. And uh, there's a man down there in the end zone ready to catch this kickoff that if you let him loose, he runs about, to put it in yards, he runs 100 and about 9-3. And as you know, did very well at the World Championships in track and field at Helsinki. Was third, I believe, in the, uh, the hurdles. The kickoff, Galt will take it two yards deep, and he comes out. Trying to get outside up, beautiful open field tackle by number 20, Earl Jones, the backup cornerback from Norfolk State. And there is a young man who was willing to take a chance. And what a shot he made on Willie Gump. So the former Tennessee star trying to bring it upfield. Ran into a good open field tackle. And the Bears will start from their own 12-yard line. St. Louis in front of New Orleans, 7 to nothing in the first period. And, of course, next week on CBS, Dallas at St. Louis. Where the Cardinals have won four of nine meetings at home against the Cowboys. Hope for the same result next week. Walter Payton over the 15-yard line for a gain of about four yards. We'll bring up second and six. In addition to that Dallas-St. Louis game we just mentioned, some of you will be seeing the Giants at Atlanta. And, of course, the Falcons uh, off to a good start here. Hope to uh, keep that going the rest of the day and next week as well. Tampa Bay at Chicago. The Bears will be hosting their Central Division rivals here at Soldier Field. Galt is in now. Billy Galt on the right side. Play action. McMahon has Embry Moorhead open. Moorhead. A big first down on the 47-yard line of Whitemore. And Glacebrook, the safety, is trying to pull him down. Nice play action. Jim McMahon faking well, and Moorhead open for a 31-yard gain. A good read by McMahon as the, as the outside men were pretty much double covered. Moorhead goes right down the middle and splits the zone with the safeties deeper than the linebackers, and you look for that hash mark to hit that receiver, and Emery Moorhead, who has established the tight end position for the first time in Chicago since the days of Mike Ditka. Rookie Dennis McKinnon, number 85, is in at wide receiver now. They give it to Peyton. Peyton is met behind the line of scrimmage and barely got back for no gain. Al Richardson, number 56, making the tackle. And right there as well, Kuykendall and that busy safety, or busy cornerback, pardon me, Bobby Butler, number 23, getting into the action, a gain of a yard. The Bears, the Bears shuttle their plays in with receivers, whereas the Falcons uh, signal theirs in a lot more. What a signal system the yeah, we'll get a look Falcons at have. Dan Annie tried to describe it to us last night. McMahon up the middle, complete to Matt Suey, sneaking out of the backfield, the fullback circle, and a gain of about five, maybe six yards. See where they spot the ball. They're into Atlanta territory at the 46, 47 yard line, let's call it. It'll be third down and a long four. The Bears may be taking uh, a lot of those little passes. They took 
Peyton and Sui down about five Third yards and turn around because the Falcons in that 4-3 dropping those linebackers way off. And they're saying a little bit that they'll give you that short pass, but they have to watch out for a guy like Peyton. You give him that short pass and he'll run by your linebackers. Dalton and Bashnagel wide to the right. Warhead in motion back to the ball. Deep drop for McMahon. Firing up the middle, complete to Bashnagel. Splitting the defenders, he has a first down with Dykendall, Murray, and Pridemore. Make it number 37, Kenny Johnson. All in on the play and a perfect strike from McMahon. It's, all, it's amazing they, they completed that pass because Bashnagel ran right where Walter Payton is. He'll come across the line of scrimmage and Curry's got a hold of Payton's head here. I don't know if we'll see it as Kuykendall's in the coverage and you'll see Payton right here in Curry. And Curry was tackling Payton. Bashnagel made the grab and it's a first down for Chicago. Ball at the 36-yard line. Walter Payton trying the right side. He's got some running room, dancing his way down close to the 20 for another Chicago first down. 27 Tom Pridemore made the tackle for the Falcons. And they'll spot it at the 22 yard line. And of course, the count continues as Walter Payton up to 13,224 yards. The only guys ahead of him Brown, Simpson, and Mitchell. That's combined yardage. In rushing yardage, he has about 10,200 yards, and he's only at about 2,100 yards behind the great Jimmy Brown's record, and Peyton's only in his ninth year. He's got 33 yards today on eight carries. Jay Saldi in a tight end for the Bears. Quick oh. count and incomplete. Pridemore on the coverage against Jay Saldi. Good play by Pridemore because the pass was going to be there. He couldn't get there in time, so he did the second best thing, and that is hit Saldi right as the ball got there and just jolt it loose, and Tom Pridemore did the job. He's been there for a while. These, uh, most of these Falcons played together for a few years. The problem that they're having, or if you want to call it a problem, they had a pretty good exhibition season, is that they, you know, they're working on this three force and new concepts and pass coverage, and it takes a while to, to, uh, to get it going, the four three. Good man. Open in the end zone, but it's picked off. Intended for Willie Gall. Oh. And it is intercepted by Bobby Butler. A flag is down, however. Let's see which way this call goes. The first flag of the afternoon. And Chuck Heberling, the referee, will sort it out with the rest of his staff as we see that lineup. Offensive pass interference, number 81, will be declined. It's a touchback. First it's against the Bears. Atlanta. Jay Saldi was called for offensive pass interference, so the play will count. Interception Atlanta. They had Marjoram double teamed on that play. No way for the completion on that one as uh, McMahon threw into pretty much double coverage. And so the Falcons will start from their 20 when we return. We're the man of the moment for the Atlanta Falcons picking off the McMahon pass in the end zone and Mike Ditka watching his team marching well and then suddenly the miscue. The pass was intended for Ken Marjoram and Bobby Butler had a beat on it all the way. The offensive on, pass in the no, against the Bears and so the Falcons start first down and Miller from way outside comes back to the ball in motion. Quick pass out to Alfred Jackson is overthrown incomplete. Second and ten for the Falcons and Dan Henning's new system with Steve Bartkowski at quarterback uh, with uh, Miller as the wing back uh, designated by the Falcons as their H back. No particular reason why it's the letter H just like they use X, Y, and Z to designate other receivers. The Rams lead the Giants three to nothing in the second period. Detroit in front of Tampa Bay two to nothing. Baseball score. Houston leading Green Bay ten to seven. Second down. Andrews straight ahead. Osborne makes the tackle after a gain of about a yard. The Bears are using pretty much their 46 defense, uh, which doesn't designate even defense. It's a, it's named after their former player, Doug Plank, who, who retired this year. But they, they really have a, what you call an odd defense. By odd, I mean a man over the center quite a bit. And a lot of situations where the defensive backs are up tight and linebackers have to cover people downfield. And so far, they've been going with that quite a bit. Now they've brought in a lot of defensive backs. One, two, three, four, five, six defensive backs are in for the Bears. And that'll bring the quarter to a close here at Soldier Field. And so 
the Atlanta Falcons get through the first period of the season with a six to nothing lead over the hometown Chicago Bears. And we'll be back in a moment. It'll be third and about nine for the Atlanta Falcons. And they have the ball at their own 21 yard line. Six defensive backs in the Buddy Ryan Bears defense. And young Tyrone Keyes, a rookie out of Mississippi State in the Canadian League, is in along with Al Harris up front. Williams and Terry Schmidt joining the secondary. They give it to William Andrews. Coming back the other way, just got away from Hampton. Wilson got a piece of him and good pursuit by the Bears. Stops him at the 21 yard line, just at the line of scrimmage. So good defensive play, Osborne and Bell making the tackle and Atlanta will have to punt. There's a man number 68 that uh, each year he comes back, they think, well, maybe this is the year Osborne will become a backup. He gets challenged every season and, and the veteran continues to hang in there. This is year number 12 for him, holding off Steve McMichael's challenge for the starting role. Ralph Giacomaro, the rookie from Penn State, will punt. Jeff Fisher standing at the Bears 39, waiting to receive. Giacomaro, another beauty. Fisher from the 39 is hit immediately. Perfect hang time for Giacomaro, enabling Curran, number 89, to arrive at the same time as the ball. A 42-yard punt, no return. So the Bears will see if they can march it down again. They were stopped by Bobby Butler's interception, their last possession. We'll be right back. Morris, first down Chicago Bears here at Soldier Field from their own 38-yard line. The Bears had 36 yards rushing in the first period. They banned five out of eight passing for 64 yards. In the wide throw set, Ash Nagel and Morris back with the ball. Suey's got a block. Suey picks up five, maybe six yards out the left side before Kenny Johnson, the cornerback, number 37, slashed in to knock him down. A nice play for the Bears. That time they had the offside lineman coming as with the action of Peyton going one way, and then Covert and Feta are on the left side of the line as they block down. And then here come the pulling guards, Revi Sori, 69. And boy, I tell you what, nice job by Jim Covert as he blocked uh, Jeff Murrow pretty well, didn't he? Yes, he did. Big Jim Covert, 271 pound first pick out of Pittsburgh. Good shot to Suey, cutting it back inside, and a first down for Matt Suey out to the 49-yard line. Walter Payton got a good block in on that play, and it was Don Smith, number 65, and Buddy Curry, number 50, making the tackle. There had to be good pursuit from the inside, or that would have gone for big yardage. Here's Feta, number 64, pulling, and there's Colbert blocking down. Now, Feta turns up the field to throw his block. And then only the pursuit from the inside, as you see Don Smith come over there from the inside and get on the tackle. But uh, he does a job on Buddy Curry, who bangs off of it and makes the tackle, but not before the Bears had the first down. Good interior line blocking. All complete, six to nothing. First down, Bears near midfield. Wide open, and Moorhead. Left. There's Moorhead, and he dropped oh. the ball. Emery Moorhead dropped the ball at the five-yard line. And catching up was Bobby Butler, but Moorhead probably could have just fallen into the end zone had he been able to hang on. So it is second and 10 back at the Bears 49. Well, Emmy Moorhead has not had a history of dropping passes. He comes to the sideline. He's going to have his head down at that time as he won't want to look Mike Ditka in the eyes. But the Falcons obviously made a mistake in the defensive secondary. Look how open Emery Moorhead, 87. And sometimes those are the hardest because it's he's so open. Boy, I tell you. I wonder a little on the bit, top of the shoulder pass. Yes, it, it like. did. Yeah. And I wonder also if the sun might have been a factor down there. But Wide open. This will uh, allow no excuses. Here is Walter Payton. Payton, first down with a nice move as he had caught the ball for a gain of five and then using that remarkable ability got by both Johnson and Pridemore to get the first down inside the 40 to the 39 of Atlanta. Falcons lead it six to nothing. Bartkowski, four of seven in the first quarter for 50 yards and the touchdown pass to Andrews. The Bears trying to match that. Had one picked off in the end zone by Bobby Butler. Let's see that play again. Okay, Bear offensive line doing a good job as McMahon. Do you notice how quickly he went forward in the pocket? Here is Peyton getting wide to the right. Peyton dancing his way down to the 30-yard line. And Buddy Curry, the linebacker, again coming all the way from the left side. 
putting the stop on Hayden, but not before about a nine yard gain. They'll spot it just outside the 30 of Atlanta. Walter Payton, that time carrying the ball like a windmill. Did you notice his arms swinging as he carries the ball? Uh, sometimes it's way out, but he doesn't fumble very much. And Payton has 21 Chicago Bear records. The Falcons have put in some defensive substitutes. Their number one choice, Mike Pitts from Alabama, number 74 is in, along with number three, Andrew Province. Number 72, the number three pick. And Doug Rogers from Stanford as well. And that is Kuykendall making the stop. On Peyton trying to get inside. And it'll be close to the first down on second and about a yard. Let's see if uh, they're going to measure, and they are. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited. Of course, uh, without a sellout here in Chicago, there is no telecast locally except for one special telecast going to Papa Bear's home. Well, George Hallis has been very sick lately and he's in his apartment. He wanted to see the game and if he wants to see the game, he's going to see the game. That's right. right. He rigged up some special <laughs> wires to get the, get the game for Papa Bear who's been around pro football for since 1920. Well, we wish him the very best and uh, know that uh, right now he's hoping the Bears can march it down and perhaps take the lead. Right now, they are third and a little bit inside the 30-yard line of the Atlanta Falcons. Gates, Zeely, Smith, Merrow, the front for Atlanta. McMahon, who take the pitch, tried to sneak it, and it'll be close. Quite a stack up. It would appear that McMahon got enough, but we'll wait till they mark the ball. That one was a tough one to call it, whether he did that on purpose or not. It looked like it was a fake of a little pitch and then a, a delay quarterback sneak. Now they're going to measure. It does appear that he got it, but it's close. Very, very close. All right. Meanwhile, let's check the rest of the NFL action while they get the measurement here, and it is Ooh. going to be short. The Giants lead the Rams 6-3. to three. Rob Carpenter has scored for the uh, Giants. The point after was missed. It'll bring up fourth down and inches here. And this is the second time that the uh, Giants have been in, uh, the uh, Bears have been in this spot. Well, this time they're down in the territory, and you can understand for sure why they go for it. It's a little bit long for a field goal for Bob Thomas. He can make it from 45. Uh, but you're down to the 29 yard line. You got one yard to go, and you got Walter Payton. He can fly through the air like a gazelle. And three tight ends are in. On the last fourth and short, they gave it to Suey. Let's see what happens here. Payton. He's oh. got it and then some. Payton. Down the sideline and stopped by Kuykendall at the nine-yard line of the Falcons. What a block by Matt Suey, number 26, as he hit Pride more. The, the Falcons weren't expecting Peyton to go so wide, and watch 26. He's the key to this play, and the block down by number 78, Keith Van Horn. 26 goes through the, the hole. Pride more, 27, comes up to make the stop. Here comes a block. He puts him right on his back, and Peyton dips to the outside and turns it on. Great blocking by the Bears as Peyton takes it down first down. Rookie Anthony Hutchison from Texas Tech, the Bears 11th pick this year, is in the lineup now as Peyton gets a brief rest. First down at the nine yard line, and it is Hutchison. Hutchison trying the middle, got a couple before he ran into traffic there. And the white shirts of the Falcons, first man to hit him, Don Smith, number 65, and up gets Fulton Kuykendall, who has had an outstanding first half of play here for Atlanta. 10.03 to go in the second period. It'll be second and goal to go from the eight. Eichendahl is a guy that the Bears have to worry about. He gets off that line of scrimmage and watches the action and fills those holes. He's a tough guy. Wide right back, Nagel. Wide left, Galt. Both set has Hutchison and Suey. They give it to Suey. Suey trying to cut it up inside. He is tripped up. Turned inside by Jeff Merrill, who got a hand on it. And he got only about a yard with his momentum. 
result, Matt Zui. Yep, and we're going to have a third down, and uh, I would have to say it's a passing situation. Let's see if they roll out with McMahon or having set up straight. The Falcons have been pretty basic with their defense. The four-man front, very little blitzing. Let's see what they do this time. Ash Nagel and Marjoram go wide right. Walter Payton back in. Third down. Six to nothing Atlanta lead. And for Marjoram, the ball is there. Touchdown. Oh, yes, he had it long enough. The Falcons are protesting that he dropped the ball, which he did, but the official rules, he had it long enough in the end zone for the score. Ken Marjoram. A super catch by Marjoram. We're going to get a look at the in the end zone, the way the rules read. He came down with the ball, and that's it. You have to have only momentary possession. I don't agree with the rule, but that's the way the rule states it. All right, Bob Thomas will try the point after. We are tied at six. And it is good. The Bears have taken the lead from the Atlanta Falcons. On the point after try by Bob Thomas. A perfect throw from McMahon to Ken Marjoram. The official says he had it long enough, and so, with 8.55 to play first half, Chicago 7, Atlanta 6. Ken Marjoram. Number 82, the young man from Stanford. Got himself holding a turf that pass. Burn there. Yeah, did he ever. And he landed right on those elbows, Johnny. The Bears went 62 yards in 11 plays. And have taken the lead. And the kickoff in the end zone is Lynn Kane and too deep to bring it out. So Atlanta will start first down from their own 20. And Bob Thomas nailed himself a kickoff. Boy, he's happy. The rap on him as uh, he hasn't been able to get it in the end zone. Well, he did that time. Later today, you'll be seeing U.S. Open action from Flushing Meadows National Tennis Center. John McEnroe and Vince Van Patten among the matches you'll see. And Vitas Garolatis against an uh, outstanding young junior. Perhaps you'll be seeing for the first time Aaron Crickstein, 16 years of age, and he's won two matches in the third round against Carolinas. First down for the Falcons, and Andrews breaks tackles and rolls out to the 36-yard line. What a display of power running by 206-pound William Andrews. Oh, did he run over Gary Fensick, number 45. Of course, he's tough. Boy, he's got big legs, and he runs low, and he'll hit you. Watch 45. Fensick come up there as Andrews gets through the hole. Then it's a head-on-head -head collision, and there's a little bit of discrepancy there between weights, and he just buries Fensick and takes it on down for the big gain before a bunch of bears bring him down. Nice running by William Andrews. Bell and Richardson finally combined to stop him. It is first down for Atlanta. And give again to Andrews, this time trying the left side, picked up about four out near the 40-yard line where Mike Hartenstein put the stop on him. Mike Kinn was out blocking in front of him, and uh, I'm sure William Andrews said, Mike, get out of my way. I'm going through the hole. Ken couldn't get his block out of the way. They did get four yards out of it, but he could have gotten more. But Ken, who just came back uh, last week after a contract, just played very well last week and is in there uh, at the left tackle spot. Second and six. We'll talk a little bit more about that in that offensive line, which has really had a couple of significant changes made by the new coach, Dan Henning. There is Andrews picking up a couple of more. It'll bring up third and four. Cabral and Singletary on the tackle. John Scully, the third-year man from Notre Dame, had such a good camp at right guard while Thielman was holding out that Dan Henning was reluctant to move him. So when Thielman returned, he shifted him to left guard, and that bounced Pat Howell from the starting lineup. So Howell is backing up Thielman, and Thielman finds himself alongside his fellow holdout, Mike Ken. So Thielman really learning uh, a new position on the left side of the Atlanta line, and Scully continues to do a good job on the right. Third and about three. It'll be short of the first down, but close. William Andrews, again, smashing out with Brian Cabral, playing for the injured Gary Campbell at linebacker. Cabral, number 54, on the tackle, and they're spotting it just short of the first down. They are going to punt. He's not going to do what uh, Mike Ditka did early in the game. He's going to punt and get the Bears back deep in their territory. We're at the Atlanta 45-yard line, and so Dan Henning... Feeling discretion, the better part of Valor here. Sends in Ralph Giacomaro, the rookie punter from Penn State. In a contest with George Roberts during the preseason. Roberts injured and out for the season. Giacomaro becomes the punter. 22-year-old 10th pick. And gets another long punt. And 
Fair catch being signaled by Fisher. The ball goes out of bounds at the Bears 18 yard line. So the Chicago Bears will start with 6.04 remaining in the first half from their 17 where they spot it when we return. That's my second favorite place I'd like to be right now out in that lake. What a beautiful day for it. It's a hot sunny afternoon and there's enough wind filling those sails as Jim McMahon has been filling the air. 7 of 11, 85 yards for the Chicago Bears and Bears are starting from their 17-yard line with a one-point lead over the Atlanta Falcons. 6-0-4 remaining first half. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris with the action here, and it has been a good football game to this point. Walter Payton, and he is hit right at the line of scrimmage. Don Smith had the initial uh, lick on him. No, Richardson make it, number 56, and could not hold on to Slippery Walter, but slowed him down enough to hold him to about a three-yard gain. And you know, Richardson got a solid shot on Peyton. He really did. Peyton will always get you that extra yard or two, and that's why he's uh, one of the greatest that ever played this game, because uh, he's running towards the line of scrimmage. He can be completely jammed. He'll always get you one or two yards, even if there's no hole at all. Second and a long seven. And wants to throw. Screen pass. Suey. Dewey has a first down out to the 28-yard line where Kuykendall made the hit. Got some help from Kenny Johnson, the cornerback, number 37. And who was making a key block? 34, Walter Payton was out, right out there in the middle of that screen and threw a block on Buddy Curry that helped spring Suey around for the first down. Let's take a look. The line gets out there. So does number 34, Payton. A well-executed screen, and you're going to see number 34 along with uh, Feta and... Daniel, there's 34 blocking on Kuykendall, 50, and Suey puts his head down, gets a couple of extra yards. Johnny, we have seen the basic 4-3 from Atlanta all the way in this game so far. Here's Peyton off tackle right, tripped up behind the line, again falling forward for a gain of maybe four yards on the play. Once again, Al Richardson, 56, had a, he had an arm, he had a hold of Peyton, but couldn't bring him down, and Peyton got the extra two or three. Richardson's going to be a little frustrated if this keeps up. Now we've got four defensive substitutions coming in with second and five. Mike Pitts, Andrew Province, Doug Rogers all come in along the front for the Atlanta Falcons. Peyton already has 70 yards rushing. There's the three linebackers are inside the defensive ends. They're stacked defense. Dan Benish, a rookie from Clemson, also in. Play action, McMahon. He's got Bashnagel open who takes a hit but holds on. No, it is... Is it picked off or not? The ball came loose, but it is a Chicago reception. And it was Bob Glazebrook stripping the ball from Bashnagel, but after play had been whistled dead. Good job by Bashnagel to hold on. He knew he was going to take a shot from uh, Glazebrook. He was wide open. Glazebrook was late getting over there in that zone, and Bashnagel waved for the ball, waved for the ball. And you'll see 36 coming over. Bashnagel has to concentrate, takes the shot. He's down. And the tie always goes to the receiver. So it is first down for the Bears as Bashnagel gets a little attention at the sideline. They are at the Atlanta 42-yard line. In this direction and end around Moorhead and what a tackle on Moorhead by Kenny Johnson, number 37. Smelled it out all the way, but a gain of about two for Chicago. And now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Tim, here's how New Orleans tied up St. Louis. George Rogers got it down to the nine-yard line. Then the handoff to Wayne Wilson earlier dropped the touchdown pass, and now it is seven all. Let's go back to Tim Ryan. All right, Brent. 40-yard line of the Atlanta Falcons sees the Bears with second down. And Anthony Hutchison in the lineup, number 32. Play action fake to him. Quick player out to Matt Suey and good coverage again by the Falcons. And it is Bob Lazebrook pulling him down after a gain of maybe four yards. And that'll bring up third down and three for the Chicago Bears. To me, third and three is the most interesting call in football. Is it a passing situation? Is it a running situation? The defense has to decide how they're going to play it. The offense has to decide whether the, you know, third and three, I don't have to explain it. It's a tough call and a tough play to defense. Okay, now here, let's uh, look at where they are on the field, and what are you going to do, throw or run? I think I would throw, but uh, they're in the shotgun, and they sometimes will hand off to the remaining back, an inside handoff. 
Hutchison in motion. And a deep drop. Under pressure. Out of bounds for a loss on the play. And forced out by Andrew Province, the rookie from South Carolina, number three choice of the Falcons this year, who showed some good speed for a big man at 6'3", 265. And so the Bears are stopped once more by the Atlanta Falcons and will have to punt. Loss of about two yards on the play. Bob Parsons, of course, will come in to punt, and the Bears have only had two punters in the last 22 years, Bobby Joe Green and for many, many years, and now Bob Parsons for 12 years. So they've been pretty stable at the punting situation. He always punts well. There is Billy White Shoes Johnson, bothered by a little sore neck, but uh, still their main man on returns. And he's going to let that ball bounce, and it hit Hutchison on the head. <laughs> Hutchison down there on the coverage for the Bears had the ball hit him right on the helmet at the 10 yard line and the ball almost certainly would have bounced into the end zone of its own volition but instead it's going to be at the 10 yard line where it uh, where it hit Hutchison and so the Bears will start at that point when we return with 218 remaining here in the first half and a one point margin for the Bears. There has to a sports car performing on a racetrack, that's expected. A Toyota SR5 sport truck doing it, that's incredible. But it's this kind of incredible performance that's helped make Toyota the number one selling line of import trucks in America. And as incredible as this Toyota handles, that's how smooth and comfortable it rides. That's incredible. That's doing it right. For Sheriff Duval, whose car lacked the pickup to make the pickup, there's Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. For absent-minded Professor Doyle, who never remembered to check her oil, Gulf's full-service dealers check it for her. For Morton Mitchell, who demands the right gas, but at the right price, Gulf self-service makes more sense for less sense. Gulf, everything we do makes driving too far from now the NFL today Brent Nerva scores and highlights an exclusive interview with Arch Schleister and of course a report from the US Open it is Atlanta ball at their own 20 yard line a touchback rule since the ball landed on the head of a Chicago player down at the 10 yard line the ball advanced out to the 20 of course and the Falcons will start from there and it is William Andrews off tackle left loose ball recovered by the Bears Mike Singletary picks up the loose ball to the 25 yard line and still going with it he, he wanted a touchdown linebacker you bet but he was stopped and Osborne making the tackle on the play I think it was Osborne who might have stripped the ball loose as Andrews was coming through he had some running yardage let's watch number 68 Jim Osborne he comes from the back side as Andrews cuts up the field Trips that ball loose, and it's Mike Singletary who picks it up. Nobody touches him, so he can get up and run. And boy, I tell you what, he'll crawl if he has to. Come on, Mike Singletary, get up. One foot after the other. There he goes. He takes off down the field, and he wants the touchdown as everybody was after him. But the Bears have the ball. The Falcons are in some trouble. Tough break for Andrews, who had a good run going out of there, too, when the ball was stripped. Pitch out to Willie Gump. And Gump gets about three. Down to about the 21-yard line. Well, there is a play that may have surprised the Falcons. A pitch out to the wide receiver, Willie Gaunt. And I would say any way you can get the ball to that speedster is a good idea. Well, he's going to be a, a real good football player. He came very late to camp, as you know, because of the World Championships in track. And they're trying to get more and more involved as each game goes by. We're down to the two-minute warning here. Second and six for the Bears at the Atlanta 21. Sunny. Hot afternoon at Soldier Field in Chicago where a fumble recovery by Mike Singletary of a William Andrews fumble as the Bears in scoring position at the 21-yard line of Atlanta. Suey and Peyton are the running backs. Marjoram and Bashnagel are wide receivers. Jim McMahon continues at quarterback. He is 10 of 14. Play action. Peyton, first down. Out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Kenny Johnson, number 37, drove him out. 
Into the game comes Galt, 153 and ticking. And Galt brings in the play to McMahon, and Peyton, as I mentioned, has 70 yards rushing. He has 48 100-yard rushing games. Only one other man has more 100-yard rushing games. You know who it is? One other man. I give up. Jimmy Brown. <laughs> Jimmy Brown is at the top of those stacks that uh, Peyton is after. Peyton cuts it up inside and is stopped there by number 63, Mike Zeely, the five-year man from Kent State, Al Richardson. Also in on it. There's a penalty on the play against the Bears, an illegal procedure, so the Falcons are going to have a five-yard walk-off against Chicago to put them into a more of a passing situation, you might say. Marching back to the 19. Illegal motion, number 84, offense. First down. Ryan Bashnagel called for the infraction by referee. And a Falcons 10 to 6, and we will be ready for the third period in just a moment. Track Razor. The Bears lead Atlanta 10 to 6, and Chicago to our right will kick it off. Bob Thomas, number 16, deep for the Falcons is Lynn Kane. Kane from the three yard line. Kane over the 20 to the 25 yard line where he's finally forced out of bounds. First man to hit him, number 85, Dennis McKinnon, the rookie wide receiver. Back in the first half of play, we saw somewhat uh, caught. William Andrews has the only Atlanta touchdown and they have the football from their own 25 yard line. Miller in motion back to the ball. To give us to Gerald Riggs, number 42, second year man from Arizona State. Rushed for 299 yards in the shortened season a year ago. First half stats, as you can see, the Bears had uh, the ball most of the time. Indeed, 42 plays to 20 for the Atlanta Falcons, and they had 13 first downs, but they have only a four-point lead. 238 yards to 101, each team with a turnover. The interception by Butler of Atlanta in the end zone, and the couple by William Andrews covered by Chicago's Mike Singletary. Gerald Riggs taking the pass from Bartkowski and it looks like he has first down yardage. Otis Wilson, number 55, putting the stop on him with help from the rookie cornerback, Mike Richardson. There is uh, Gerald Riggs, 225 pounder out of Arizona State. And as the uh, current cliche goes, he is a load. Stacy Bailey into the ball game at wide receiver with Billy Johnson, number 81. Jackson and Jenkins saw most of the playing time at wide receiver in the first half for the Falcons, and so now Bailey and Johnson get some time. Ken Thielman, Van Noke, Scully, and Bryant across the front. The motion behind the ball, the rookie tight end, Ben Young. Bartkowski complete to Young, and Young picks up eight, maybe nine yards over the 45 of Atlanta. Mike Singletary on the tackle. So Ben Young makes his second catch of the afternoon. Young man from Texas Arlington getting the shot there at tight end because Junior Miller took over the wingback spot vacated by Bo Robinson who has a broken arm. And look at that time of possession. 21 minutes for Chicago to only 8.57 for Atlanta. Therein lies the four point difference. And uh, off the stats, it should be more than four. So but Atlanta's still in this game, big chance. Gerald Rakes picks up a yard as he stopped on the right side by Gary Fensick coming up from the safety position. And Mike Singletary in on the action as usual on a running play. A three-yard gain. Number 50. First and 10 for the Falcons. Now oh, look at this. This is these football coaches have made the baseball people look like pikers when it comes to singles and fakes and phonies and whatnot. That's Bob Harrison, and he was one of uh, Willie Gall's coaches at the University of Tennessee. We had a chance to talk to him the other day in Atlanta at practice there on Thursday. Producer Ed Gorman and I, and he thinks Gall's going to be just an outstanding football player. 
Barkowski is sacked. Osborne and Otis Wilson combined on the sack as Barkowski. Johnny barely got turned around when he was hit. Well, the Bears came with a little blitz that time. They are a blitzing team, but they didn't do much in the first half. As you take a look at Dan Hampton, number 99, being double team. Here's because comes with Michael 76 and Hartenstein 73. And Osborne comes through. Mike, uh, Brian Cabral 54 and Otis Wilson 55. Too many guys for the Falcons to block. So we'll see if this becomes a tendency for the Bears in the second half because they are a big blitzing team. Did not do it in the first half. First time this half, it's been successful. The mix up here in the Atlanta call of this second down play and timeout is called as uh, Billy Johnson started in motion one way and then hurried back the other way. Barkowski called timeout. So you hate to have to take one this early in a close game, but the little mix up causes an Atlanta timeout. We'll be back with the Bears leading by four early in the second half. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back in Chicago where the Falcons have made a little a minor adjustment on their offensive line. R.C. Thielman has moved back to the right guard spot. Pat Howell has moved back into the left guard spot, but he held down until Thielman ended his holdout. And uh, so uh, we might wonder if uh, either Scully was hurt or Thielman is uncomfortable with left guard. The pass broken up by Frazier intended for number 82, Stacy Bailey the second year man from San Jose State, and that will bring up third down. The Falcons obviously uh, feel that they can uh, beat the Bear Corners one on one. That time he just sent him straight down the field and uh, Mr. Frazier was up to the occasion on that last play. Junior Miller was back at his tight end spot, his normal spot, and they ran, uh, I think it was White Shoes in motion that time. Bears have sent in Steve McMichael for Osborne, and they have Tyrone Keyes and Al Harris in defensively on this third down and 20-yard situation. And Bartkowski deep for Jackson and overthrow. On the coverage, Richardson, the cornerback, number 27. But again, Bartkowski a little long, trying to get the ball to Alfred Jackson, number 85. And Atlanta will have to punt. And once again, they tried to beat the Bear Corners one-on-one. -on -one. And Jackson did have a step on Mike Richardson, but the pass was a little bit overthrown, and uh, Markowski is not what you call razor sharp on his passes. Watched him in practice on Thursday. Of course, that's a different situation, but uh, he couldn't have been sharper. He just looked terrific. Got tomorrow and just got it away from the rush of the rookie tight end Dunsmore. Jeff Fisher, single fair catch, and has it at the Bears' 27-yard line. Well, Jock Amaro facing a little bit of pressure for the first time in the game as Pat Dunsmore, the rookie from Drake, took a run at him. Bears possession when we return. 11.20 to go, third period. On CBS Sports from the U.S. Open, you'll be seeing John McEnroe and Vince Van Patten beat us Garolatis against the young upstart 16-year-old Aaron Crickstein, one of the top juniors in the United States who's already won two first-round matches. So that should be exciting later on. Plenty hot, pushing 100 degrees on field level. There is a breeze, you've heard us talk about it, but it's up high. Down on the field, it's plenty hot. And indeed, the word is that uh, Scully, the right guard, John Scully, number 61 of Atlanta, had to leave because of problems with the heat. And that's why Thielman shifted over to his old right spot, and Pat Howell was in at left guard. Now the Falcons in a 3-4 in this uh, series against the Bears. We haven't seen too much of it. Here's Walter Payton. Payton gets loose on the right side and has a first down for the Bears. Forced out of bounds by Bobby Butler, number 23. And where Payton is the most effective is from the I formation. A little counter back to the left, and he just follows the block as Van Horn pushed his block, his man down to the left, so he went to the outside, and of course, Butler had to put the chase on, and Payton got himself some big yardage. First down for Chicago. He's most effective out of the I formation. So it is first down, Chicago at the 40-yard line. You can see the uh, Bears have been rushing primarily on first down. The play action and forced out of the pocket. McMahon has a man open, and he finds Hardrum at the 40-yard line of Atlanta for another first down. Jeff Merrill was in hot pursuit of McMahon, and McMahon 
throwing, running to his left, which is uh, the most difficult thing for a quarterback to do. And again, showing that great skill he has throwing on the run. Marjoram open at the 40 of Atlanta. This is a big drive for Chicago. The Falcons will be in, in trouble if the Bears score again. Then the Bear defense gets tougher and tougher because they blitz and do all kinds of things on them. Eight, oh. Shakes one tackle, spins away from another, and gets to the 35-yard line. Pick up of five on the play for number 34, Sweetness. David Fry, the rookie linebacker, and Bobby Butler, the third-year quarterback, making the stop for Atlanta. That was only a five-yard run, but it was a great five-yard run. I mean, he did two guys out to get that far. That's what makes Peyton so great. 15 rushes, 88 yards. He's going to have another 100-yard day. Defensive adjustment for the Falcons has Buddy Curry at the middle linebacker spot and the rookie Fry on the right side. They're still playing the 4-3 defense. Matt Suey stopped just over the line of scrimmage. And it was Fry making the initial contact with Curry right behind him. It'll be third down and four for the Chicago Bears at the 33-yard line of Atlanta. Matt Suey out of Penn State broke all those... Lydell Mitchell, all those great runners from Penn State, he broke their career rushing yardage. He's uh, been very effective for the Bears, especially on pass receptions, not from rushing so much. Slot formation left for the Bears. They give it to Peyton, going back the other way. Running behind Reedy Sorry, and good pursuit by the Falcons, stringing him out all the way to the sideline where Bobby Butler finally forced him out of bounds after a pickup of maybe a yard or two on the play. And elsewhere in the NFL today in the AFC, Baltimore and New England are tied at 13 as Frank Cush tries to get the Colts up off the doormat of a year ago. New England also in a rebuilding situation. Minnesota leading Cleveland 17 to 7. An interconference tilt in Minnesota. Many think uh, the favorite in the NFC Central this season. The uh, Bears are going to go for a field goal. Apparently, they're lining up for the field goal with Thomas in. It's going to be about 50 yards if he makes it. Ash Nagel will spot it almost at the 41. Short. And that is short. There was a slight bobble by Bashnagel in putting the ball down and uh, it may have thrown the timing of Thomas off a little bit so uh, he is now uh, one for three in the field goal department today but there is a flag on the play against the Chicago Bears which will probably be declined by the Falcons I'd decline it wouldn't you I think that's a good call, Johnny. Because you get the ball at the 30. Holding, 53. Offense, 33 yard line. line. First down. Reigns was called for holding on the play on that uh, special unit. And so we have a timeout on the field with 9.01 remaining in the third period. The Chicago Bears 10, the Atlanta Falcons 6. 10 to 6, Bears lead. The Honey Bears on the sideline here. Trying to pep up the Chicago team as the Falcons have the football at their own 33-yard line following the missed field goal try from 50 yards away by Bob Thomas. John Scully has returned to the lineup at right guard for Atlanta. Billy Johnson in motion has the handoff from Bartkowski and running room out the left side. Billy Johnson has a first down to the 42-yard line. He's forced out by Leslie Frazier, number 21. 31-year-old Billy White Shoes Johnson coming back from the Canadian Football League. And he was their top pass receiver during the preseason, and he can still move the ball pretty well. And John Scully's back in the game and threw a good block to help him get around the corner. And he gets up the field, finally knocked out of bounds. Good play, and I noticed Junior Miller was not in there on that play. It is first down to the 45 of Atlanta. Gerald Riggs cuts it back behind the right guard and is pulled down by Brian Cabral after a gain of about a yard, maybe two. Two-yard gain, let's call it second and eight. The ball at the 47-yard line of Atlanta. Tight end continues to be rookie Ben Young. 
with white shoes in there, so they have the three wide receivers, and Junior is on the bench right now. In motion, back to the ball, Johnson. Goes to Rakes, he's got a big hole, and he blasts out to the 45-yard line of the Chicago Bears. He'll be just short of the first down. And it is Gary Fensick having to make the tackle deep on the big man. Gerald Riggs, 225-pounder from Arizona State. In comes Miller, along with Andrews. Here comes the signal. Catch the ball and do something with it. Andrews and Al Matthews come in to make a pro set on this third and very short. have five defensive linemen in that out. William Andrews, nice play, Barkowski on the money. On the coverage, number 25, Todd Bell, but a first down for the Falcons to the Bears' 33-yard line. The Bears with a five-man rush, but uh, the Falcons handle it, and it's a partial rollout, uh, just a little bit off center there, and he throws it up and over Todd Bell, 25, who didn't even know the ball was coming, and Andrews makes the grab. See, Bell's looking around there, and he spots the ball there. Andrews makes the grab, and the Falcons are on the move down to the 33-yard line. First time Atlanta had shown that play today, and it worked effectively. They had three running backs in the lineup, with Matthews set up on the wing. Now they're back to the one-back set up with first down in Bears territory and Atlanta driving. Barkowski up the middle, complete for the tight end. That is number 48, Ben Young from Texas Arlington in his third catch of the day. And it will be another Atlanta first down to the Chicago 21-yard line. Looks like Ben Young might be establishing himself as the number one tight end for the Falcons. That's three grabs. He didn't have any during the exhibition season because uh, he didn't play all that much. So, uh, they're at the 21-yard line, and wide to the left goes number 82, Stacy Bailey. Johnson set on the wing. Jackson in motion. Flags everywhere as the Bears blew in on Bartkowski with Otis Wilson leading the charge, but a false start has been charged against the Falcons. First penalty of the day against Atlanta. Yeah, that'll back him up five. Sometimes they seem like little five-yard penalties that don't make that much difference, but when you stop to think that they had a nice motion, a nice drive going, it puts them in a Ball whole start, different start, situation. Start, when you have a first, first and 15, you can't do that normal kind of uh, rotation of plays that you do on a normal drive, so they'll probably have to go to the air sooner than they want. John Scully feeling a little heat of a different kind as he was the culprit on that play. Gerald rakes the lone setback. Motion. Billy Johnson. Here they come. Great drop for Bartkowski, intended for the tight end, and it's tipped away by Fensick. Gary Fensick with the coverage on Ben Young. Young had a step on it, but Fensick was very much in control all the way down the field and just knocked that ball away. They had the blitz on Otis Wilson, 55, comes from the left of your screen as Young went straight down the field, and Wilson almost got there, but he overran the pocket, and Fensick had Young very well covered here, and the he tipped the pass away at the last second. Gary Fensick now a free safety and doing a good job. It is second down and 15 to go. Six defensive backs are in for the Chicago Bears. Billy Johnson in motion back toward the ball. Quick release by Barkowski for Jackson. Oh. A diving catch by Alfred Jackson to the one-yard line. And cornerback Mike Richardson cannot believe that Jackson came down with the ball. That's a super individual play by Jackson because Richardson was covering him man for man, and it's what you call a perfect pass. The quarterback put it up and over a little bit to the outside. Good blocking, Hosmer is wheeled out of there, plenty of time to throw the ball, he just puts it up and over, and watch this, it was bent to the outside, which they try and do, and look at that. Looked like a ballet star on that, didn't he? Oh, that is classic, and he literally ran into the pylon, they marked it just outside the goal line. Riggs and Andrews in the pro set. They go to big Riggs, touchdown! Cleanly in, number 42. And so the Atlanta Falcons have retaken the lead with an impressive drive, a minor setback on the five-yard penalty, but the pass to Jackson more than picking that up, and Riggs has him in front. Okay, nobody even laid a hand on him. You can't see everything there, but Warren Bryant threw a good block, 
as he caved down, and then the lead back, that's Andrews, the nice block, and he goes through for the touchdown. Gerald Riggs. So it will be Mick Luckhurst in to attempt his second point after. The first one was blocked by Dan Hampton back in the first half. And Luckhurst makes no mistake with this one. And the Atlanta Falcons have moved in front of the Chicago Bears here at Soldier Field by a margin of three. One more look at that touchdown run. Or is this the pass? No, this is and the this, run. This is the touchdown run. It's nice when you can run through the line like that and have nobody touch you. Those are the easy kind, right? You could have run through that hole, Tim. Yep, I would. Uh, That's about the only one I'd want to try. We'll be <laughs> right back. <laughs> Uh, Gerald Riggs cooling down with a wet towel as he has uh, put the Atlanta Falcons in front. 67 yards and eight plays, 224 on the clock, and a 13 to 10 lead. Mick Luckhurst will kick it off for Atlanta, and Willie Goff is waiting for it at the Bears' one yard line. Luckhurst kicking into the wind, and that's why Gall is up a little closer. Oh. He kicks the ground ball, and it's knocked down by. Oh. Bell at uh, the 25-yard line. Todd Bell, and I'm not sure who came up with the football. Bell tried to knock it down out of Dan out of Rains. The, and Dan Rains, number 53, came up with it. So the Bears a little lucky there that they didn't cough up the ball. Here's think, another look at it. Is the old squibber right down the field, and Todd Bell goes up high, and he gets a hand on it. And the Falcons came very close to uh, recovering this this ball because uh, Todd Bell couldn't gain control, bounced around, there's 53 Reigns, gets the ball, just heads for the turf, which is very hot. It's gotta be 100 degrees right on the turf or more. First down from their own 26 yard line for the Chicago Bears, slot formation left. 3-4 defense. But man, oh! Caught by Marjoram. Incomplete. Incomplete. Almost intercepted by Curry. Curry, yeah. Looked like Curry had the better shot at it than Marjoram did, but I guess Ken got a hand in on it to knock it away. And so it is second down. Double coverage on Marjoram there, and uh, perhaps an ill-advised try by McMahon to fire that one in. There it is. I, that's almost touching 100, isn't it? Plenty hot afternoon on the turf here in Chicago, and uh, we've seen one player feel the effects of it, John Scully of the Atlanta Falcons, but he has since returned. Five defensive backs in for Atlanta, including the rookie John Britt. Peyton picks up about four yards on the play to bring up third and six. And it is Don Smith making the tackle, number 65. They call him John Britt, I meant James Britt, number 26, in as the nickelback for Atlanta. Let's take a look at some of uh, the other scores, updating the Rams in front of the Giants, 16 to six in the third period. Miami shutting out Buffalo nine to nothing in the third period. Oh, it's close. Minnesota by three over Cleveland now as the Browns making a comeback. And Pittsburgh leading Denver 10 to seven. Remember Cliff Scott, the Steelers quarterback this week. Green pass to Suey, a flag down. He shakes off one tackle, and Matt Suey, with a good effort, gets out to the 39-yard line. First down yardage, but we'll have to wait on the flag. It looked like it was called somebody on the Bears' offensive line, but I'll tell you, there was another penalty downfield as, as uh, Curry grabbed a hold of Walter Payton's helmet and almost twisted him a new helmet. Gave him a resize. Walter has said... Uh, Yet to put the hat back on as he's yeah. <laughs> wondering whether it's still going to fit. That's what you call a necktie tackle, but he didn't have the ball. That helmet weighs about with all the new iron that the backs are wearing and everything. You've got to carry about 20 pounds around on your head. Remember back when Bobby Lane used to play with no, maybe that was before your time. <laughs> with no chin strap? <laughs> yeah, no chin strap, no holding, bar. Holding. Offense number 64. First down. So the penalty against the Bears, Rob Fata, the rookie guard from Pittsburgh, has been having the chance to play alongside his teammate at Pittsburgh, Jim Colbert. And uh, they were quite a, a pair on the left side of that Pittsburgh line, and Fata getting the start today for the injured Noah Jackson out with a groin injury. Fata was drafted number nine by the Bears this season. Out of the shotgun, McMahon 
On third down, he finds Walter Payton. Payton has the first down, runs into his own man. It was pushed back by Johnson. Payton tries again. And listen to the crowd respond to sweetness. How to get it back in a hurry. Go to Walter Payton. He gets off the line slick and clear and then turns it off all the way across the field. And nobody has real man-for-man -man coverage on him. He's underneath the coverage. And anytime you can get the ball to Peyton where he can turn his head up the field, look at that ball. Is that a loaf of bread or is that a ball? But he's got it. And now he gets the first down, bounce back, keeps the legs going, and it takes five Falcons to bring him down. You count the jerseys. They're all going to be in on the tackle. All right, we're back live and quickly up to Moorhead. Moorhead had the ball, and it is dropped. It was a reception and a bear recovery. Now they're ruling it dead at the spot where Moorhead made the initial catch. He was down in the judgment of the officials at the 37-yard line. Dennis McKinnon was the man who came up with the loose ball, a rookie wide receiver. However, they will back it up where Moorhead came down with the ball. And Moorhead just split the zones up the play action pass to Suey, and you'll see nobody in the picture up at the top of your screen. It's just a straight arrow pattern, and Moorhead takes the ball in, takes the shot from Clyde Moore, and then is down, and then fumbles afterwards. The referee ruled that the ball was dead at that point. The Bears on the move. First down, McMahon to throw again. Out to Walter Payton, and he has ankle tackled neatly for little gain, maybe a yard on the play. It was number 58, the rookie linebacker David Fry making the grab on Payton. And Payton has, he must have caught six or seven passes already today. McMahon had eight in a row going into this series. He had eight completions in a row, and let's see, he's completed most of them in this series. Anyway, so he must be something like 12 out of 13 of his last passes. And his totals are 16 of 21 for 207 yards. The sophomore quarterback, he did not look too sharp during the preseason. Uh, his coach and McMahon both said, hey, when the bell goes, he'll be ready, I'll be ready. And so far, it looks like he is. Look at this. time, he's got Peyton. Peyton is down to the two-yard line. A perfect throw by McMahon and Peyton holding on against the hits from the safeties, Glazebrook and Tidemore. They're trying to double the outside guys. Then you've got that deep zone, and the Bears are starting to pick on it right down the middle. You see nobody in the picture. Everybody's out wide. He waits for Peyton to clear, and by the time the safeties can converge on Peyton, the pass is there, and down he goes. And there's Pridemore and Glazebrook, and the Bears have spotted a weakness uh, in the Atlanta defense, and that is the fact that they're trying to double the outside guys and then letting the backs and the tight end get right straight down the field, and there's not enough speed get to get back and make up for the, the open space. A rookie has scored. Chicago retakes the lead. Anthony Hutchison. A young man who fought hard to make this team as we take a look at the action. Reeve Sorry down to throw the block on Curry number 50. Jay Salter gets his block, and Hutchison just pulls his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. Big drive. Two big drives. Atlanta first, now the Bears. And Mr. Hutchison, his first touchdown in the National Football League. He's a happy young man. Bob Thomas with the point after. It is good. And so the Chicago Bears have re-grabbed their four-point margin. We have 2-10 remaining third period. The Bears 17, Atlanta 13. Where you are looking in Chicago at Anthony Hutchison, number 32, a rookie from Texas Tech who has just scored to send the Bears back in front. And the Bears going 74 yards in seven plays, including a 34-yard pass to Walter Payton that set up the score. Hutchison was the 256th player taken in the draft, so I'd say he's doing okay for 256. Well, they cut veteran Willie McClendon, a pretty good ball player to keep Hutchison. Thomas's kickoff again through the end zone, has that win behind him, and the Falcons will start from the 20-yard line. Well, the, this ball game has got a long way to go with 2.04 remaining in the third period, just a four-point margin as action is heated up here in the second half. They cannot be looking ahead to next week, but uh, nonetheless, the schedule makers do, and the Falcons will be at home 
against the New York Giants who are trailing the Rams in their game today. Dallas will be at St. Louis also here on CBS. Tampa Bay will be here at Chicago. And New Orleans at the Los Angeles Rams. It all starts at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL today. Also, uh, this week, by the way, Dan Hennigan, the Atlanta coach, will be featured. the left guard Thielman picks up about three yards on the play on first down for the white clad Falcons and then a pile up of Bears underneath there and it looks like Mike Singletary and Todd Bell were the two Bears who pulled him down New Orleans in front of St. Louis 21 to 10 Bum Phillips boys with the third quarter lead over the Cardinals and Minnesota's opened the margin over Cleveland again Johnny here now back to 10 24 to 14 Detroit shutting out Tampa Bay and they're in the third period. The Bucks still looking for a point. Riggs again and he's really stacked up by the front of the Bears defense. Slicing in underneath Cabral, Osborne, number 68. And credit where it's due, we are told officially now that Jim Osborne was the man who blocked the point after try by Mick Luckers back in the first half of play. Uh, he and Hampton came up the middle, but it was Osborne who got a hand on the ball. The Bears come in with their pass prevent, bring in Terry Schmidt and Walt Williams. They'll have all kinds of defensive backs, and they will have four down linemen. Tyrone Keyes and Al Harris, 98 and 90 have come into the game defensively. Uh -oh. All kinds of motion and a bunch of flags and whistles. The right guard moved for Atlanta. Well, if that's the case, Scully. Uh, Scully has been nailed twice today. I don't know if he was the only one, but he was one of them. Well, the eager young man from Notre Dame who has earned the uh, starting spot on the right side, a little too eager on that play. He had a good camp. Yes, he did. There comes the signal. This has got to be a, a dandy play because they're deep in their own territory. Defense, false start, third down. And they have a long passing third down situation. Ball now back at the 20-yard line of Atlanta. Third. About 11? And yeah, about 11. It's just about 10 and a half. Jackson in motion. Now goes back the other way. Straight drop for Barkowski. Up the middle, and it is dropped by Alfred Jackson. Now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Tim, New Orleans is blacked out, and here is their superstar. The folks in that city are watching George Rogers now with his 76-yard touchdown run. He has also scored from three yards out. Tim, he has carried 19 ties for 186 yards. Back to Tim. Whoa, what a day, Brent, that George Rogers is having for the Saints. Here we're looking at the punter, Giacomaro. For Atlanta, fourth down, and he backs up Fisher. Tremendous punt to the 29-yard line of Chicago into the win. Now Fisher trying to get some running room makes a good return, somewhat negating a tremendous kick by Giacomaro. He got to the 39-yard line where Lynn Kane forced him out of bounds. Pulled out of bounds. 51-yard kick and a 10-yard return. So the Bears have the football again, and the Falcons are going to have to make a decision as to what they're going to do. McMahon has had plenty of time to throw the ball, and they're finding the open holes. The, the Falcons have blitzed very little. Are they going to change their philosophy, or they're going to continue with a four-man rush that has not been that effective and hope for coverage down the field? We'll see what happens. Well, Atlanta failed to convert on that third down again. They're one for eight in that department. It was a problem for them during the preseason as well. First down pass play is swing it out to Walter Payton. Payton by himself gets close to 10 on the play. Pull down from behind. Don Smith, number 65, and Bob Glazebrook, number 36. Well, McMahon's going to penny pinch him to death if uh, you get that same kind of four-man rush. They know what the Falcons are going to do every time. Four-man rush, linebackers drop off. They vary. They vary a little bit of their uh, pass coverage, but otherwise uh, not too much uh, dimension. Well, the gun sounds ending the third quarter with the score. The Chicago Bears 17, the Atlanta Falcons 13. We now pause for a word from your local station. CBS. 
sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Highlight. Welcome to Miller Time. Valvoline. Valvoline is everything you need in a motor oil. And by Delta Faucet. When they're on, they're on. When they're off, they're off. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, we are back in Chicago where the Bears hold a four-point lead, 17 to 13, as we begin period number four with the Bears second and a yard to go at their own 48-yard line. Jay Hildenberg is in at center now, replacing Dan Neal for the Bears, Peyton, and Suri, the running back, slot formation right. Jim McMahon is 18 of 23 on the afternoon, 250 yards. And Sui appears to have the first down to the 50-yard line where Mike Zeely, number 63, made the tackle. You know, uh, as you said, McMahon is 18 of 23 for 250. That's a, a sensational day. Uh, his percentage is, has really been good, and he kind of bears out Mike Ditka's stance to stick with Jim McMahon. The Bears are running all over the football field, have a big edge in stats and a big edge in, in time consumed. Ironically, for the Falcons' benefit, they're still in this football game. It's only yes, 17 to 13. And while they've given up a lot of, of yardage, uh, something that they hadn't done too much in the preseason, their defense had, had been uh, their strong suit for the preseason. Hate nowhere to go over there, try to cut it back, and ran into four white shirts, slipped, and had nowhere to go at all. Going into this play, Peyton had uh, 16 carries for 92 yards rushing and seven pass receptions for 102 yards. So that's almost a 200-yard day already, and we still have a quarter of football. And he didn't even play most of the exhibition season. He only played a half last week, which was his first game, and he looks like he's been playing for all year. He looks like he played for the USFL, as far as I can see. Don Smith went out uh, limping, and uh, Andrew Province, the rookie from South Carolina, has come in defensively, along with Dan Benish, the rookie from Clemson. So a young defense in there now for Atlanta. Screen pass for Peyton, and it's broken up nicely by the Falcons as Reavy Sorry slipped trying to set for a block, and Bobby Butler just blew by him. Put the wraps on Peyton back at the 40-yard line, a second consecutive a loss handed to Walter. And that uh, is a rare happenstance. What's going to have to happen for Atlanta is uh, they need one big play on defense to turn things around. Well, they've got a third and 20 to work with right now as they have backed up the Bears on two consecutive plays. Peyton comes out, Hutchinson in. Dash may go right. You can see Chicago is four for 10. Looks like uh, they're faking blitz now. We'll see if they go through with it. Third down conversions. A lot of down see what they do here. Everybody's on the line of scrimmage. Here they come. He rolls away from it. Complete to Moorhead, well short of the first down yardage. Out of bounds at the 49 yard line. A pickup of uh, nine will bring up fourth down. Pretty good strategy by Atlanta. Put the overall blitz on, force McMahon to throw the ball before he wants to when you have 20 yards to go. And uh, fortunately for the Bears, McMahon was on a quick rollout, which enabled him to get the pass off, but not enough for the first down. So the Falcons have a chance to uh, take the lead here. Billy White shoes Johnson. You see Bob Parsons. There's Johnson waiting for it at the 11-yard line. Atlanta will have the win this quarter. Steve Bartkowski. Reach that pass attack. Long count on the punt by Parsons. Gets it away from about the 40-yard line. Ball is short, bouncing at the 20. Bears will down it at about the 18-yard line. So the Falcons will start following that 33-yard punt by Parsons. 12-28 remaining. In regulation time, the Bears by four. Well, 60 minutes, followed by Alice, one day at a time, the Jeffersons, Goodnight Beantown, and Johnny Blue, a couple of shows I have yet to see, and I'll be home in time to watch them. Chicago leading Atlanta 17 to 13. Here, Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris with the action as the Falcons, trailing only by four, have plenty of time and the ball at their own 19 yard line. Wide to the right goes Billy Johnson, out to the left, Alfred Jackson, Andrews. Ball running back. Let's see who's set on the wing. Junior Miller's back. Junior Miller. Miller in motion behind the ball. Eight back. Atlanta. And the pass for Johnson. What a catch against the coverage of Richardson. 
and the rookie from Arizona State has got to be saying, what do I have to do to cover any better than that? But Johnson just looked that perfect pass in all the way. And Barkowski was looking at him all the way, just waiting for him to make his move in. Todd Bell, 25, is too short to help out. And you throw it to the inside like that, there's nothing that the defensive back can do about it. That's a perfect pass. Had to be in that spot, and that's where it was. First down at the 38-yard line of the Atlanta Falcons. Long set back again is Andrews. Jackson in motion this time behind the ball. Pitch out to Andrews on the short side. Gets two good blocks and gets out to the 50-yard line. And it appears he has another first down. Gary Fensick, the man to force him out. Boy, Mike Ken had to pull on that play, and he did a job. Did they run over Cabral that time as Andrews had some nice running room to the outside. Excellent play. You know, when you look at Atlanta's offensive personnel, you've got to believe they're going to be an explosive football team. It, it seems to be just a, a question of time getting it together with Ken and Thielman holding out during the preseason. Scully, a new starter, and of course the new Dan Henning system, but the weapons in terms of personnel are clearly there with this Atlanta football team. Might take two or three weeks to get it rolling. Great drop, and he just got it away as the blitz from Cabral flattened Bartkowski just after he released the ball. It was intended upfield for Alfred Jackson. Well, that's a way to get your quarterback hurt. The Falcons aren't all that deep in quarterbacks. They only have two activated for this football game. Morosky is the other quarterback. As you know, Barkowski has been pretty uh, pretty strong the last few years, has, has avoided injuries. You're going to see Cabral, 54, from the backside. And Barkowski doesn't see him, but I'm sure he feels him. As Cabral has a clean shot, and he got rid of the ball just in time, knocked the pass off the dime. And fortunately for Atlanta, Barkowski did not get hurt. Ryan Cabral playing for the injury. Campbell, Gary Campbell with a knee who should be ready to go next week, but the ball's played well. Now Barkowski with more time, runs out of it. Oh, nice move away from the pursuit and finds an open man, Johnson. Johnson spins away from one man and has a first down at the 38-yard line of Chicago. No flags are down. What an effort by Barkowski and Billy White Shoes Johnson. We're going to have to call him Bart the Scrambler. That time he couldn't find anybody down the field. The pass protection held up for a while, but when he couldn't find the, the receiver, he started to scramble. Look at the, the blocking. Excellent blocking by the line. Nobody's really putting that much of a rush on until finally he goes out, and then he has to turn running left, throwing back to the right. White Shoes kept up with his off pattern, and Cabral couldn't do anything about it. Atlanta has another first down. Excellent ad lib play. First down, Falcons in Bears territory, on the move, straight ahead, Andrews. Mm, five yards out of that. Boy, and he just took the tackler back with him, Cabral. William Andrews, who can run, he can catch, and he is a serious football player. Down to the 32-yard line as we see 10-23 and counting here in this fourth quarter. It'll be second and five to go for Atlanta. Wide to the right goes Jenkins. Jackson and Miller come wide left. The Bears are using a three-man rush now, three-man defensive line, 3-4. Oh. And it's complete to Jenkins. Alfred Jenkins has another first down. Fensick on the coverage with Richardson. And there you see Dan Henning, Bob. Harrison looking on from the sideline with the signals of this next play. Atlanta is moving the football. Bartkowski is now piling up some pretty good statistics also. They're at the 21-yard line of Chicago with a first down. Jenkins goes wide right. Jackson left. Miller in the slot left set on the wing. Perfect catch. And the Falcons are back on top. Oh, what a play by Steve Bartkowski and a great grab by Jenkins as the Bears put the blitz on. Singletary 50 and Cabral 54 came right up the middle. They were after him right from the gun. Now you can see him coming. They're bearing down. One of them gets through, but Bartkowski throws the ball up and over, and they beat Richardson to deep, and Jenkins with a perfect pass and a perfect grab. Excellent execution. The Atlanta Falcons, they deserve that touchdown. 31-year-old Alfred Jenkins. Along with Billy Johnson, also 31, 
Still a pretty spry, moving those legs down the field and nothing wrong with the hands. They've got a veteran receiving core and they've been doing the job. Dan Henning certainly feeling a little better about things. 9.17 on the clock. Luckhurst with the point after. Morosky to hold. Flag is down. The kick is good. Let's see what the call is. One thing that I do know is the Falcons have scored more touchdowns in this game than they did the entire exhibition season, at least offensively. Maybe against uh, Atlanta. We're waiting to see. Now they're going off the field, so it must be against the Bears. The extra point is good. There is no foul on the play. There is no foul on the play. Uh, he had to blow his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Dry 17 you. remaining in regulation time. The Atlanta Falcons now lead it 20 to 17. Jenkins, number 84, was just put Atlanta on top, 20 to 17. And meanwhile, the temperature continues to rise. About 104 down there on the field, 103. There is Willie Galt awaiting the kickoff from Mick Luckhurst. And Galt standing one yard deep. Luckhurst has the wind behind him. Nice high one down to the goal line. Willie Galt, the Tennessee sprinter, will bring it out. by the Soldier Field crowd, but James Britt, the rookie defensive back, their number two choice for Atlanta this year, was able to make what probably was a saving tackle at the 36-yard line of Chicago. And Luckhurst himself had to get in on that tackle. You'll see number 18 get in on it as Willie Gall takes it from about a yard inside the end zone, came within a stride of going all the way, faking to the right, and then cuts back right up the middle, and that's where he's dangerous. And you'll see 18 right there. He has to get in on the tackle, too. Mick Luckhurst and Britt makes it. Back live on first down. McMahon wants to throw, but he is going to be sacked. Eludes all of those rushers and is finally down at the 35-yard line. So the Falcons get the sack and a loss of about two yards on the play. Yates, Zeely, and Don Smith all got a piece of McMahon. Falcons went 81 yards in seven plays, used up 3.11 on the clock. Jenkins, a 21-yard touchdown pass from Bartkowski. That's about an average of 11 or 12 yards per play. Not too bad as Dalt is in there. McMahon is 20 of 25, 254 yards, but he is trailing by three points. Play action. Up the middle for Moorhead. And it is broken up at the last instant by number 26, James Britt, the rookie from LSU. He's the nickelback, and he was in there, and uh, his speed was evident there because Moorhead had a couple of steps, and he had tried to split the zone again down there, and uh, the Bears went after the same play that had been successful for him, but uh, Britt got in there, his speed caught up with the ball, and he was able to knock it away. There's a lot of time left in this football game, 8.26 on the clock, but the Bears find themselves in if not a crucial, certainly an important third down situation. Third and 11, they'll go to the shotgun. Warhead on the slot right. Suey sets up on the wing. Let's see if they blitz. Doesn't look like it. Dalton Dashnagel, they go to Peyton. Peyton for the blocker in front. He was met at the 40 yard line and did not get much. Maybe five on the play. Well short of the first down. Good defensive pursuit. Number 63, Zeely. Kuykendall, number 54. And John Rady, the rookie linebacker from Boise State. All come in with a big defensive play, forcing a punting situation for Chicago. Under the eight-minute mark we go. Bob Parsons into punt, standing at his own 27-yard line. Back at the 23, it'll be Billy Johnson for Atlanta. And he's mighty dangerous, as everybody knows. The average is better than 12 yards a return. Parsons did not get much on that. It's taken short. Flags are down. Johnson gets it up to the 39-yard line of Atlanta. Dave Dewerson, the rookie from Notre Dame, made the tackle. Let's it's gonna, see what the flag is. I think it's going to be against uh, the Falcons, an illegal block. Well, that's an unfortunate play for them to make there because they had a short punt, they had a good return and good field possession, and it looks like a holding call is being signaled against 
Atlanta or illegal contact. We'll get a better look at that signal when the referee, Chuck Caberling, gives us his still, official word. Still a good play by White Shoes. It was a short punt. He got himself up there real quick and made, didn't let the ball bounce. Illegal block on the return, number 26, first down. An illegal block charge against the rookie James Britt. So the Falcons are backed up to their own 29-yard line, but they have the football with 7.29 to play regulation time, and they lead by three. We'll be back. Brian and Johnny Morris, you're looking at the Atlanta Falcons who hold a three-point lead with 7.29 remaining in this fourth quarter. They have first down at their own 29-yard line. Steve Bartkowski leads them out. Back offense, William Andrews, a long running back, and motion behind the ball comes Alfred Jackson. Is he open? Man, wide open. That is Jackson. He has first down yardage. A pickup of about 13 to the 42 yard line of Atlanta, where Leslie Frazier and Brian Cabral, 21 and 54, make the stop. Jenkins cleared it for Jackson, who went down the field about four or five yards, stutter stepped, and then came across right there, and he was wide open as everybody was down the field to cover Jenkins, and Jackson was able to get the first down. I'll say one thing, the Falcons aren't going into a shell with their lead with 56 left to go. First down pass play. They come out on the slot left. In motion goes Jackson the other way, being picked up by Richardson. Give this to Andrews. He's got a big hole off tackle and blasts out over the 50-yard line. Bensick pulled him down with Todd Bell, the safeties, but a flag down. Van Note, their 15-year veteran, was blocking on Jim Osborne there right in the middle. Got a key block. Whether he was the man that was charged with the uh, holding call, we'll find out. Jeff Van Note in his 15th NFL season out of Kentucky. And it is against Atlanta as they march it off. 6.38 on the clock. The last time they were penalized like this, they overcame it and still got the touchdown. Let's check the penalty. Holding offense, number 57, first down. Sharp by Johnny Morris, picked out the infraction by the veteran Jeff Van Note. Watch the center, 57 blocking on Osborne, 68. He gets the block, but they rule that he gets his arm around him and pulls him down there. And that was the call against Atlanta. Hillary motion back toward the ball. And oh, is it open? The reverse, and they've got a block for him from Scully and Andrews. Picks up about eight yards. Todd Bell fought off the block to make the tackle. Another flag down. Well, you hit it right on the head. Todd Bell did an excellent job of getting away from Scully's block. Scully, who didn't throw his body out there, because if he gets that one block, Andrews goes for some big yardage, but there's a penalty anyway, so it's a moot point. It's a pretty good football game. Yes, it is, and apparently this penalty is again against Atlanta, so they're hurting themselves here, protecting their three-point margin on foreign turf, the opening game of the 1983 season. And we might be looking at overtime, too. Very possible. Little discussion among the officials, but the teams are waiting for it back in the Atlanta zone, and they will march it off against the Falcons. And it is being marked off from the point where Andrews had uh, been stopped. Starting to play. Illegal use of the hand. Number 61 on the offense. First down. So yeah. Scully, who was throwing that block on Todd Bell, apparently. That's where he's got to throw. He's got to throw his body. He had plenty of time. He had one man to measure. And now he's pushing his hands up on his uh, arm there. And he got behind him. And uh, that's what the call was. So it is first down from the 31-yard line. Sure. Another big hole for Andrews over the 40 to the 42-yard line. Picked up about 10 yards. Back near the Boy. original line of scrimmage. Boy, did Scully and and uh, Ken blow through there. They're doing some pretty good power running up there. Let's take a quick look at that Green Bay score. Look at interest the Bears fans. They're leading Houston 31 to 24 now. The Oilers coming back some on the pack. And New Orleans in front of St. Louis 21 to 10. 
Andrews again and just barreling off the right side, dragging Bears tacklers. Wilson couldn't hold him. Keys couldn't hold him. Fensick finally in the pack that stopped him. Another good run by William Andrews, number 31. Bears with uh, young Tyrone Keys in there, 23 years of age. He goes six foot seven, 260 pounds. Jim Finks, former general manager, found him in the Canadian League. They traded the New York Jets for his rights. 86 yards for Andrews. Here's the here's the call of the game. Third and five. Atlanta wants to retain possession. They could really eat up a lot of clock if they could. Let's see what they do. Third and five. We've got to figure the pass. 5:15 and ticking, and the crowd exhorting the Bears defense to stop him. Rolling is Barkowski. He's going to run, and he is short. Jim Osborne wrapped him up right near the line of scrimmage. Tyrone Keys got in on it, number 98. And so the Bears have stopped Atlanta, and the Falcons will have to punt. So the Bears, trailing by three, will have the football with ample time on the clock. We have 5.04 showing now. Jock Amaro standing at his own 32-yard line. Jeff Fisher awaiting the punt at the Bears' 11. Everybody's in the line for the Bears. Ten men up on the line. Jock Amaro has the group behind him, and he has been nailing the football. And it's just away from the dive of Bear defender Richard Dent, a rookie. And it is down by the Falcons at the eight-yard line, so... Chicago has its work cut out as Jock Amaro does the job and Chicago will have to come from deep in their own end with 4.30 remaining in regulation time. The Bears trail the Falcons 20 to 17. Cheerleader now, if he doesn't do enough for this Bears team and he's got that crowd riled up. And remember, we have tennis following football today on CBS. You'll be seeing McEnroe and Van Patten Garrel Addis against Aaron Prickstein, a 16-year-old. Walter Payton has got this crowd whipped up. You'd think he'd be too tired to think about that, but uh, he's not. He's played um, almost the entire football game, as a lot of these guys have, in 100-degree temperature. Now McMahon's got to quiet him down. Payton got him fired up, and McMahon's got to quiet him down so they can hear the signals. It is first down Chicago from their nine. Pitch out to Payton. He's turned inside. Now takes it back outside. Hey, oh. forced out of bounds after as pretty a piece of running as you will see in the rookie James Britt. Knocked him out of bounds. Well, he had nowhere to go outside, took it inside, and then back outside. Look at him. Here he is again. <laughs> Just some, a nice piece of individual running here as Walter Payton is about to rush for over 100 yards in his 49th game, 49th time. Look at that. What balance. He could have been a great gymnast. Pick up of close to nine for Peyton. It is second and a long one. The ball is at the 13-yard line of the Chicago Bears. They fake the pitch out. Suey to the short side, and Suey still gone. <laughs> to the 36-yard line where Zeely and Whitemore made the stop for Atlanta. Just when they begin to worry about Peyton as he went off to the left, they give the counter handoff to Matt Sui. He got to the outside and gets some big yardage, puts his shoulders down, and the Bears are on the move. Kenny Johnson has to come in and make the tackle. During this replay, I was watching Peyton. Peyton, one second, is leading the cheers of the crowd and then quieting them down so the Bears can hear the signals. He's like an orchestra leader out there. Play action. McMahon, great move. Merrill. Directing traffic for Suey Kent, one-handed incomplete. Buddy Curry back deep on the coverage on Suey. 3.28 on the clock. 20 to 17 Atlanta leads. The babyface quarterback from Brigham Young has his work cut out. Second down from his own 36-yard line. Uh, Jeff Merrill thought he had him there, but McMahon felt the pressure and got out of it. The young man who set 71 NCAA records when he was in college at BYU. Anybody set 71 records, I don't care what they do in that would be pretty good. 100 degree temperatures on the carpet at Soldier Field. Time winding down. Now Peyton, you can see in the left of your screen, trying to quiet the crowd down. He's got him whipped up one minute. 
He's out of the pass back. Man, sideliner. He's got a man open, and Nashnagel dropped the ball. On the coverage was Kenny Johnson, who slipped on the move Bashnagel put on him. Bashnagel wide open, perhaps so surprised, seeing all that real estate in front of him. He just lost sight of the ball. Boy, that was a key drop. That was a key drop. First down play. Now they're in a third down and long situation, so they can't afford another mistake. So that's a key drop. Bashnagel, who's usually very reliable. 3.21 to go, regulation time. The Bears are 4 of 12 on third down conversions, and this certainly their most critical. Wide to the left goes Willie Galt. Out to the right is Bashnagel. Boy, they're one-on-one -on, -one on Willie Galt right now. They've got Woo! Peyton set on the wing with Emery Moorhead in the shotgun, and now McMahon wants a timeout as he did not like the look of that Falcons defense. Falcons have not done anything fancy defensively. They've stayed with a 4-3, I'd say about more than 90% of the game. Yes, they have. That time they jumped into getting everybody in the gaps and looked like they were going to come with an all-out blitz like they did a few moments ago. So McMahon, considering that it was such a critical time, third and 10, with only a little over three minutes to go, wisely, I think, in this situation, called a timeout. The, where the Falcons were weakest in that situation was that uh, they had Kenny Johnson out there man for man on a guy who can run about a 9-200, and that was the danger point of the defense, but they sure shook up the Bears with it. Leading 20-17 uh, here with 3.21 to go. They have McKinnon in the game. It's basically a one-back uh, offense right here with Peyton, the only running back in the game. They came out of the shotgun, interestingly, on third down. Yes. Behind the ball, Moorhead now comes back the other way. He's the man in motion. Straight drop from McMahon. McMahon getting into difficulty. He is sacked. And it was Fulton Kuykendall, the middle linebacker, finding a hole and dropping McMahon back at the 30-yard line. It'll be fourth down. And Rob Fata looks like he's hurt pretty bad down there, uh, the Bears guard. As Kuykendall, number 54, delays. It's a delay blitz. Then the pressure comes, which leads Kuykendall right into the tackle. Just a delayed thing. He was there short trying to pick up somebody that came out of the backfield, Walter Payton, 34. He was watching for Payton, and he ran into a sack, and that was a key sack now. Bolton Kuykendall gets the job done with a big defensive play. The veteran from UCLA, Rob Fata, the rookie from Pittsburgh, number 64, being uh, assisted off the field with a slight limp. And uh, the Bears will have to punt. Now time is a huge factor for Chicago. 3-15 and counting. Parsons standing at his 15. Billy Johnson waiting for it at the 34-yard line of the Atlanta Falcons. Parsons having to kick into the wind. And he'll be concerned about just catching the ball. I'm talking about white shoes rather than a, than a return. They're saying, just catch the ball. We want possession. Ball hung up in the wind a little bit, and he made a somewhat tentative grab, but he made the catch. That's what counts, and the Falcons have first down at their own 32-yard line. Dan Raines, number 53, with help from Brian Bashnagel, number 84, made the tackle. 40-yard punt for this man, Bob Parsons. See, he didn't get in good position. The ball took off on him a little bit. He had to catch it from the side, and those are the dangerous uh, ways to catch a football because you haven't got your body behind you, and uh, he came close to fumbling that ball. But he hung on, Atlanta has the ball, and now it's in the hands of the offense. The Falcons can win this game if they can get a couple of three touchdowns, a nice drive going and keep the ball from the Bears. But there's still a long time, 244. First downs will do it even for them. Right, yeah, they won't even need touchdowns. Their first down at their own 35 yard line with 244 on the clock. In motion behind the ball is the tight end, Young. They go straight ahead to William Andrews. He's got a yard, maybe two. See, now that time, Gary Fensick was in there on a safety blitz. And this is what the Bears will do to you a lot in these, these running situations, bring those backs up, figuring the Falcons will never put it in the air, and they fill all the holes, and it becomes tough to run against them in the tough yardage situation. They had, in effect, six or seven defensive people right there in the middle of that line. So it's going to be tough to run up the middle the way the Bears will play it now. They're going to try and force the Falcons to run outside or, or into a pass, or otherwise Atlanta's not going to get a first down. Todd Bell and Cabral leading the charge on the tackle. Second, they had a long eight. Pitch out, Andrews trying to get wide, cannot, cuts it back up the middle, spins his way out for about a six, maybe seven yard gain, 
And Mike Hartenstein reigns back to make the tackle out of number 73. A good effort by Andrews. Well, that's the way they're going to have to get first downs. It's a little bit to the outside, not up the middle. Timeout on the field for the two-minute warning. Atlanta 20, Chicago 17. Bartkowski brings out the Atlanta Falcons. They lead by three with two minutes to play. They have the football third and a yard and a half to go at their own 43 yard line. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris as Bartkowski went back for a quick word with Dan Henning, the rookie Falcons coach. They are one for nine converting on third downs. Most of them have been longer than this one. Obviously, uh, this is the biggest one they faced all day as they try to keep possession of the football. The Bears stacking it up. Harris, Osborne. They've even got the cornerback Frazier up on the line. They go to Gerald Riggs and Todd Bell cannot hold him. First down for Gerald Riggs. The 225 pound running back from Arizona State does his job dragging Bell for the first down. It looked like Bell was going to try and strip the ball there rather than try and put his head in there and stop him with a, with a big hit and Riggs is so powerful that he was able to go forward and that's a big first down the Falcons really got things going their way now. The ball at the 48-yard line of Atlanta. Out to the right goes Jackson. Out to the left, setting up on the wing is Alfred Jenkins. Andrews, the lone setback. 121 in county. Andrews gets about three. Putting to the left side of that line. It is Al Harris, number 90, with the tackle. And a timeout will be called by the Bears. Stopping the clock with 109 to go. Chicago, Let's see, that's the Bears' second timeout, I believe. Didn't McMahon call one in the third quarter when they yes, were? Yes, he did. So they only have one left, which means that they can stop the clock immediately one more time. But then the Falcons would have another play that they could, if they ran the ball, could eat up 30 seconds, get it all the way down to. Oh, at least towards the 30-second mark. And if they kept the ball on the ground, uh, by the time they punted the ball, I'd say the Bears are in bad shape, wouldn't you? I would say that analysis is, is not only uh, accurate, but aren't very sharp? mathematical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed, and I think you're right. The Falcons are in the driver's seat. They led in this ball game early in the game, six to nothing. A, a missed point after gave the Bears a chance to go ahead. As Mike Ditka, you can see there. Uh, rubbing a furrowed brow and hoping for something good to happen here and not trying to pep them up with a little hand clap. I'd be, uh, the big thing now is that those backs can't fumble and uh, I'm not too sure I wouldn't even just uh, not even risk a handoff. You know, just uh, the big thing is just to eat that clock down. So the ball at the 49 yard line of Chicago and they go to Andrews again. Andrews has stopped at the line of scrimmage. Singletary and Osborne combining on him. And he got about a half a yard on the play to bring up third down. Let's see what the Packers are doing here. One of the Bears rivals in the Central Division. Wow. 38 to 31. What a ball game. Those Oilers, it looked like they might fold up early in this game, but they're obviously contesting it here in the fourth. Timeout called. The final one as uh, we count them by the Chicago Bears. We have one minute exactly on the clock. Third down. The Falcons need a long six for a first down. So it'll be an interesting play coming up here. Well, you have to hand it to Atlanta. The, the team has put in a new offense. They sputtered all training camp and uh, have finally got it together right when it counted on the first league game. They've had pretty good offensive performance. I mean, they scored uh, three touchdowns and moved the ball well. However, the Bears have overall moved the ball better. But the Falcons have the points. Dan Henning is in good shape now as they're congregated over on the sidelines with uh, Bartkowski, who's coming back with the play. And they can eat up 30 seconds now because the Bears can't call a timeout. Well, they were a little slow starting in the first half, even though they scored first. There you see Minnesota in front of Cleveland, 27 to 21. As the Bears had most of the offensive possession in the first half, but Atlanta's made things happen in the second half with a touchdown by Riggs and Alfred Jenkins. Oh, and they give it to Andrews. It gets away from the first bear after him, but then it stopped right at the line of scrimmage. So Atlanta will have to punt. 52 seconds on the clock. Otis Wilson blew in there. 
Andrews eluded him, but Singletary made sure he got no farther. Now they have Jeff Fisher back, who is a good punt returner, but Willie Galt is the guy who has been returning some punts, and he's that 9-200 man, but they've opted to go with Fisher, more sure-handed and a good punt return man. But you might wonder if, hey, if our only shot is uh, a long punt return or something like that, we might want to go with Galt, but they're not going to do it that way. Well, Atlanta's just letting that clock tick away, and they are... Uh, take a five-yard penalty, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, and they're... Uh, they're really uh, in command here of the clock. As you see, it's down to 12, and they'll just let the thing go. There's the uh, flag down as the time expired on the 30-second clock, and so they'll just back it up five. So it'll take a miracle finish for the Chicago Bears, who played rather well but find themselves on the probable short end of the score here against the Atlanta Falcons, who who did the job in the second half. They left trailing only 10-6, to six, and I'm sure Dan Henning said, hey, guys, we didn't have the ball a whole lot in the first half. Wait till we get it in the second half, and we'll make something happen. And they did. Ricks scored to send them in front 13-10. to 10. The Bears went back in front, and then that pass from Barkowski to Jenkins, a 21-yarder, sent them in front and probably to stay, barring a miracle finish by the Bears. The rookie, Giacomaro, back to punt. Okay, here's the danger spot. The Bears have everybody in the line, and I'm sure they're going to go for the block. U.S. Open tennis follows football today. Don't forget, you're on CBS. Got tomorrow. Wing behind him. Sails one up high. It's caught by Fisher. Fisher has dropped almost immediately at the 24-yard line. There is one second on the clock. Dan Dufour downfield with Blaine Geisen to make the tackle for the Falcons. Who, who don't want to have... come on the field. The Falcons, do, they figured the time was out, but it's not. There is one play left, and if they don't have 11 men back at the 50-yard line, I'll be surprised as the Bears are coming out in a big hurry trying to catch the Falcons before they're ready. Yeah, but the Falcons get lined up pretty well here. And out of the shotgun, the Bears with three receivers on the right side. McMahon lets it fly deep downfield and hangs up He's there, and it's going to be almost intercepted by the Falcons. And that'll be it. So the Atlanta Falcons have hung on to win their first game of the 1983 season. There is their rookie head coach, Dan Henning, shaking the hands of his players and looking quite calm in victory. Coming over from the championship Washington Redskins and getting his head coaching job with Atlanta. And uh, certainly the feeling that perhaps his team was not quite ready to start the season because he had Ken and Thielman as holdouts. And uh, he had Bo Robinson get injured, the man he had been grooming as the wing back, and then having to shift Junior Miller in there. But they got the job done here today. We'll be back in a moment. Atlanta 20, Chicago 17. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris back at Soldier Field where the Atlanta Falcons have defeated the Chicago Bears 20 to 17 in the season opener. And we have uh, Steve Bartkowski, the Atlanta quarterback down on the sideline. Steve, uh, an outstanding game. I know that yesterday you seemed almost eager to get the season started. You like this new offense of Dan Henning.